Houston says no to men in the ladies room. This is Skywatch TV for Thursday, November 5th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. Earlier this week, voters in Houston defeated an ordinance that supporters said would have offered more protection from discrimination for gays and transgender people. The campaign to defeat it focused on one part of the ordinance that opponents said would have uh, allowed transgenders to use the bathroom of the opposite sex in public places. Democratic Mayor Anise Parker, who is gay, supported the ordinance, and uh, it received endorsements from the White House, Apple Computers, and Hillary Clinton. But 61% of voters in Houston turned thumbs down. Now, however, the federal government has ordered a high school in the Chicago suburb of Palatine to allow a boy to shower with girls. The young man dresses and identifies as a girl. The school district keeps his records with the girls' records. He's been allowed to use girls' bathrooms and play sports on girls' athletic teams. Uh, the student filed a complaint in 2013, and in response last week, the school district agreed to install privacy curtains in the girls' locker room. But because he wasn't given the option to use them, he was told he had to use the privacy curtain, the Department of Education's Civil Rights Division decided that wasn't good enough, and it's given the school district one month to comply or risk losing federal funding. Now, the Department of Education does not have judicial powers, but it's been using Title IX as a club to enforce this social engineering agenda. Title IX was a federal law passed in 1972 that bans discrimination on the basis of sex. The Obama administration has been applying Title IX to transgender issues. Now, I don't raise this because I'm a hater or because I've got uh, a hang up and this makes me feel all oogie. It's because these young people who are gender dysphoric need help, they need love. And instead, they're being encouraged to pursue a lifestyle that is, frankly, dangerous. We've reported before on this program, uh, back in 2004, a survey of over 100 international medical studies showed that there's, and I quote now, no robust scientific evidence that gender reassignment surgery is effective. After the surgery, postoperative transgenders are still distressed, even suicidal. In fact, new research released this year shows that 41% of transgender people attempt suicide. But research also shows that the vast majority of children and young adults who are gender dysphoric would grow out of it if left alone. In some studies, up to 90% of them. The former chief of psychology at Johns Hopkins Hospital, which was the hospital that pioneered gender reassignment surgery back in the 1970s, now believes that gender dysphoria should be treated as a body assumption disorder, similar to uh, anorexia. So it's bad enough that activists are promoting an agenda that frankly makes a mockery of God's design for humanity. You know, in the beginning created he them male and female. It's encouraging young people to pursue a lifestyle in which two out of every five will try to kill themselves. And the federal government is now compelling local school districts to pursue this agenda and go along with it. In other news, another Russian plane has crashed. Wednesday morning, a cargo plane in South Sudan went down. Witnesses say 41 people died in the crash. Spokesman at the Russian Aviation Agency said it appears that the plane was overloaded normally only carries 12 people. NASA has discovered a slightly more inconvenient truth. A new study by the space agency says that uh, contrary to what the UN would like us to believe, Antarctica is actually gaining ice. Researchers at the Goddard Space Flight Center at the University of Maryland just published a paper. Satellite data shows that Antarctica gained a, a net of 112 billion tons of ice per year from 1992 to 2001 and 82 billion tons of ice per year from 2003 to 2008, while the Earth was supposedly warming. Now, researchers say this isn't necessarily good news because they point to studies that show that the ocean levels are rising by 0.27 millimeters per year. It was believed that that increase was due to melting ice in in, in Antarctica, and if the ice isn't melting there, then we don't know where that water is coming from. But bear in mind that Climate change is about control, not saving the earth. And more than that, it's about making lots and lots of money. Uh, The global carbon credit commodity market, trading carbon credits back and forth on a commodity exchange, is predicted to be a trillion dollar a year market once it finally gets off the ground. Now, an interesting story that slipped under the radar in September, because like most Americans, I 
think nothing happens outside our borders. The uh, Prime Minister of Australia resigned, Tony Abbott, in September after he was defeated in a leadership vote for the Liberal within the Liberal Party. Um, his uh, replacement, a man named Malcolm Turnbull. Now Abbott had previously replaced Turnbull as head of the Liberal Party back in 2009, in part because of opposition within the Liberal Party to Malcolm's support for an emissions trading scheme, trading carbon credits. Now, Abbott had recently ordered the Australian government to audit information that was being put out by the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. Some in the media there and some in government were skeptical about the numbers coming out, the temperature data. Suddenly, lo and behold, Mr. Abbott is voted out as head of the party. Now, coincidentally or not, Malcolm Turnbull, his replacement, was the chairman of Goldman Sachs, one of the most powerful investment banks on planet Earth. He, he was chairman of their Australian branch between 1997 and 2001. Technocrats will use any argument they can to compel us to let them tell us how much energy we can burn. Now, here's another new one. Uh, it causes immigration. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who's being widely criticized in her home country for the flood of new arrivals, uh, says that global warming will lead to even more migrants from Africa and the Middle East arriving in Europe seeking sanctuary. Again, it's not about saving the Earth, it's about control. In the Arctic, uh, Russia is continuing its military buildup. They staged massive war games up there this summer, trying to beef up its claim to what's believed to be a wealth of oil and minerals under the ice. The U.S. Geological Survey says that uh, could be up to 20% of the world's reserves of hydrocarbons at the North Pole. Uh, Republican Senator, Senator Dan Sullivan of Alaska reported to the Senate's Armed Services Committee this week that Russia's Arctic Command includes four new brigades. They're building airfields and expect to have 50 airfields in the Arctic by 2020. And Russia deploys more than 50 icebreakers above the Arctic Circle. By comparison, the U.S. has two icebreakers and one of them, says Sullivan, is broken. Now, I'm speculating again here. There's good reason to interpret the uttermost north in Ezekiel's prophecy of the Gog-Magog invasion as uh, referring to Turkey. It was believed that uh, Mount Zephon, which is on the Syrian-Turkish border, was the site of the Palace of Baal. And it was the traditional direction that enemies coming in to conquer Israel came from. Uh, but what if the uttermost north actually means the uttermost north, like the top of the globe? There are a number of countries up there that are jockeying for position. Norway, Denmark, Canada, the United States, and Russia. And what if Gog of Magog actually comes from the nation that's controlling the top of the world? By the way, reported on a story earlier this week that just illustrated my lack of military knowledge, I didn't pick up on the significance of the news that the U.S. Air Force is deploying F-15s to Incirlik Air Base in Turkey, ostensibly to fight against the Islamic State. The F-15, I now learn, is equipped only with air-to-air -air weapons. Now, the last time I checked, the Islamic State doesn't have an Air Force, doesn't have any aircraft at all, in fact. The only planes flying over Syria, other than U.S. or Turkish planes, are planes belonging to Syria and Russia. Keep an eye on that situation. NASA uh, has an announcement about another announcement. They have announced that they're going to announce something about the Martian atmosphere Thursday afternoon, maybe like what happened to it. Uh, we will report on that as soon as the information has been released. Say goodbye to the Fourth Amendment. Uh, that's, of course, the amendment to the U.S. Constitution that protects us from unlawful search and seizure, uh, unreasonable searches and seizures, that is, and requires probable cause for a judge to issue a warrant for law enforcement to search through your stuff. Well, last week, the Senate overwhelmingly passed the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act. It's supposed to improve cybersecurity through enhanced sharing of information between federal agencies and local law enforcement agencies about cybersecurity threats. What it actually does is provide legal immunity, unconstitutional, but legal immunity, to the government to collect and search through our digital data without a warrant. It does nothing to protect computer networks from the type of hacks that uh, compromised 
40 million credit card users at Target stores earlier this year, or the type of hack that obtained sensitive personal information like divorces, financial trouble, mental, emotional health issues, illegal substance and alcohol abuse, police records, etc., for 21 million federal employees from the network of the Office of Personnel Management. There's nothing to protect against those type of hacks. What it does is allows the NSA, FBI, CIA, and other law enforcement to intercept and sift through our phone calls and emails and so forth. Uh, our internet service providers and phone companies basically, with the passage of this bill, have been integrated into a massive cyber surveillance network, and you and I are the ones being watched. And meanwhile, technology giants are racing one another to develop artificial intelligence to make our lives easier. Uh, Facebook has a new AI, a personal assistant called M. Uh, it is built into its Messenger app. It's being tested now, similar to the uh, Siri app on the iPhone or Cortana on Windows 10. Uh, Google is rolling out a new AI that can respond automatically to your emails, sort of. It basically sifts through your email, compares it against millions of other emails that have gone through its neural networks and uh, uh, offers you three different choices for a, a, an automated response. Um, this is basically the same system that was described in a recent novel called Avogadro Corp by author William Hurtling. Uh, it's a really good read and very, well, eye-opening. Um, you can figure out who he's talking about in the novel. Avogadro was an Italian scientist who came up with a number to describe a certain chemical uh, unit of measure. And of course, Google, spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, is also a number, you know, 10 to the 100th power. So uh, again, worth reading. It's eye-opening um, and entertaining as well. Um, artificial intelligence is just one component that a group of believers in a new 21st century religion hope to use to achieve immortality and to do it within the next 30 years. We're talking about the transhumanist movement. It is the subject of the forthcoming documentary film, Inhuman, The Final Phase of Man is Here, from Skywatch TV and Defender Films. We talked about it Tuesday night on Skywatch TV on the Christian Television Network. It's uh, part of our continuing investigative series, Genetic Armageddon. If you didn't get a chance to see the program with Tom Horn and Sharon K. Gilbert, you can see it now on our Skywatch TV channel on Roku. If you have a Roku account, log on, search their channel store for Skywatch TV and add us, or uh, if you would like specific instructions, we've got those posted to the website as well. You'll find those at skywatchtv.com slash Roku. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions, send those to me. I promise you my email is read by a natural intelligence, although sometimes a little limited. That would be me. Uh, dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Coming exclusively from Skywatch TV for a very limited time starting November 17th, 2015. When you purchase the new documentary film Inhuman and the companion book Dead Pets Don't Lie from Skywatch TV, you'll receive the largest giveaway in Skywatch TV history. An unprecedented $300 in free books, audio sets, and DVDs to add to your library or to give away as gifts during this holiday season. Included in this limited time giveaway are never before offered free audio sets. Over 30 hours of the most sought after interviews in history with global experts combined on a special two disc volume set discussing the unfolding genetic Armageddon now underway and what you need to know to survive the future. Featuring Something Transhumanism This Way Comes, The Coming Replacement Humans, The Days of Noah, the Coming Zombie Apocalypse, Conspiracy Theory, Psychotronic Warfare. Also, for a very limited time, in addition to the never-before-offered free best-selling audio sets, if you order before this special offer expires, you'll also receive the multi-part Skywatch TV special investigative report on Inhuman, the documentary, and Dead Pets Don't Lie, the award-winning book Forbidden Gates, Pandemonium's Engine, the best-selling DVD by dog behavior expert Joe Artis, The Natural Dog Training Method. The breakthrough book for pet enthusiasts everywhere, Do Our Pets Go to Heaven? Two additional mystery books with a $40 value. And if you're one of the first 3,000 customers to place your order during this limited time offer, you will also receive absolutely free the groundbreaking WorldNet Daily film, The Last Pope, featuring Tom Horn. 
place your order beginning November 17th, 2015. Altogether, the never-before-offered free six full audio series on a two-disc volume set plus the five free books and two additional DVDs total an astounding $300 giveaway to add to your library or to give away as gifts during this holiday season. So it's urgent. The beginning November 17th, 2015, you order the new documentary film Inhuman and the companion book Dead Pets Don't Lie for only $39.95 to also receive the largest giveaway in Skywatch TV history. But please understand this offer will end without notification and is on a first come first serve basis starting November 17th. So be sure to visit skywatchtv.com to follow the countdown to the greatest giveaway in Skywatch TV history. Order the new documentary film Inhuman and the companion book Dead Pets Don't Lie for only $39.95 to also receive the largest giveaway in Skywatch TV history.